Hello and welcome. We find the Walt power tools very good. Not so good is the battery packs. So I just check this here. Look, totally dead. Let's see if we can fix it. This is your battery pack. It's called a neck type and it slides up into the handle of the drill or in with some others power tools and as you can see this one is 12 volts 1.3 amp and the batteries that are in this are nickel cadmium NICD. Now one of the things to take note of is the one closest to the trigger is generally the positive and I have tested it and it is the positive this is held together with screws, they are T10s. So let's pull that apart and we're going to upgrade it with lithium ion. Now DeWalt and some other companies say that you can't run a nickel cadmium power drill on lithium ion. We're going to find out. Now I've pulled it apart and again remember 12 volts, 1.3 amp. And these are the batteries that I found inside. Now there was 10 of them and actually only 3 of them were any good or in any way not rotten. And 10 of these is 10 by 1, they're 1 1.2 volt so it would be 12.4 and what we're going to do is I pulled apart a laptop battery pack and I have these batteries here. And charged up to 4.21 and it's claimed that there are 2000 milliamps each. So three of them connected in series brings it up to 12.6 volts. Now it's all very well putting those in and then what are you going to do when you start to charge? You're pushing 12.6 plus volts through one battery. So what I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate it here with a this now this is a 4S, but I can use 3S off it. So when it's charging, it's the BMS board. It will put an equal voltage into each of the three batteries. So we'll go ahead and wire this up, and then we'll install it and see if the drill works. Now I've not done this before, so I don't know if it will work. And if it does work, it's good for all of you out there who have old uh, NICAD battery drills. And if it doesn't work, then it's also good for you out there who have NICAD battery drills. Now I cut out all the little bits of soldering. So it's, you can see it yourself and you can uh, see how it's done. And the important thing is we get voltage. So we'll just test it there now. So we can see negative and positive. And you can see there it's 12 volts. So it's been balanced out at 12 volts, which is ideal for what we want. And ideally, it says here 40 amps, so it can take a load. Whether the batteries can handle it or not, now I did test one of the batteries and it is coming back at 2000 milliamps or thereabouts. But when there's a draw on three of them together, it might go a little bit imbalanced. But considering that the original one is 1.3, it should be able to perform. Now let's uh, seal it up. We'll insulate all the contacts on the battery it's itself to keep them from possibly shorting out and then we'll put some Clapton tape all around them and pack them all together. Now the batteries are actually smaller than the container so what we do is we'll, we'll bulk up the container a bit with a probably a bit of a insulating paper, some sponge and we should be able to get it nice and snug. Now in the neck of these there was usually a battery. So what I've done is I made up a little block to resemble the battery. So we'll put that in there. 
when we fit everything and a uh, little bit of uh, there's a little cap here that goes in here so what we'll do then is we'll just put a little dab of super glue around there and hold it in place and we should be good to go so I'll go ahead and do that now I did forget something before I soldered it all together I forgot to put this little cap on it goes the negative lead runs through it up to the connector or the pins and I have sealed this all up and again after having to desolder and resolder we'll just test it again no point putting it back together if it's not working so here we go again and you can see there it's still 12 volts so what we do then is we just have to push this in now again remember the positive is towards the trigger so that's the positive side there so that pushes in there and then we have the little plug push that in and then the cap and then we just push the cap in I had to make a little change this board here is a charge board a charge balance board and but it doesn't allow for a load to come out of it it's only for going in so what I did was I, got, I used a Schottky diode ran it from the 12.6 across to the positive and you see the little line here that means that's the little band going around the shot key it means that it blocks voltage going back so just cover it over with some captain tape it's those for those who are unfamiliar it's a insulator and it's also heat resistant then the little cap inside here super glue that give that a few minutes and what we'll do now is we'll just test it now the balance board would have been working while it was sitting there so the voltage may be slightly different now we'll just do a test and you can see it's come up to 12.25 so it's balanced out the cells again before you start to use it best thing to do then would be to put it on charge and it'll balance it out completely and the next step now is to reassemble it into the container the charger pack and then we can test it now after a bit of wiggling about I've got it back into place and let's just test and see if we have something and here we go 12.25 so next thing to do is to fit it into this old drill now remember this used to be nickel cadmium and ICAD and now it's lithium ion let's just see Turn it around the other way. So it is possible to upgrade, well, this particular one anyway. Now, some of them, they do say some of them won't, but no harm giving it a go. The lithium ion batteries that are in there came out of a laptop battery pack, as I, as you, I mentioned earlier on, and that was going for recycling. So why not use it and give it a go well i hope you enjoy this give us a thumbs up if you did and drop a comment if you wish ask questions like share and subscribe and you'll find us on the usual social media platforms thank you